In microcontroller applications, there is often the need for various serial communications. In other videos, we've talked about Ethernet, USB, and CAN. Today, I'd like to talk about the remaining simpler standards, namely UART, LIN, SPI, and I2C. These are great options to minimize cost and code size when high bandwidth isn't required. Let's begin with a quick review. One nice thing about these simpler standards is that they don't require a lot of signal wires. UART, LIN, and I2C use only two wires, and SPI uses four wires. UART and LIN are based on asynchronous transmission, which makes them work well over longer distances, and therefore are a good choice for off-the-board communications. Using clock synchronous transmission, SPI and I2C offer higher data rates over shorter distances, making them a good alternative for on-the-board communications. Two other factors to consider are hardware cost and scalability. UART and LIN use transceiver chips, which result in higher hardware cost, whereas I2C uses pull-up resistors, which are less expensive. SPI doesn't require any additional external components, making it the least expensive of the four. Scalability is another consideration. With built-in device identifiers, it's easy to add devices to a LIN or I2C network. SPI requires a separate chip select signal for each device added, making it more complex to scale. And UART uses point-to-point -point wiring, making it very inefficient to scale. Where are some places where each of these standards are used? Let's say that we wanted to connect a microcontroller-based system to a diagnostics display. UART using an RS-232 transceiver is a good option for this point-to-point, longer-distance requirement. Or let's say we have a washing machine with several subsystems, and we want to connect them all. Here, LIN is a great fit to create this off-the-board, scalable network. Another example is a high-speed link between two microcontrollers located on the same board. Since there are only two devices, and high speed is the key criteria, SPI would be the best choice. And finally, let's say we wanted to create a sensor network in our system. Since I2C uses pull-up resistors instead of transceivers, and because it's easy to scale, it would be a good cost-effective choice for this situation. So we've seen that these simpler serial standards can be useful in a variety of application scenarios. Now let's see how you can implement them using the RX63N microcontroller. The RX63N has three peripheral blocks, which can be configured to support these simpler serial standards. First, let's talk about the Serial Communication Interface, or SCI. The SCI has 13 channels, and all of them can be configured for use as UART, I2C, or SPI, with a maximum bitrate shown here. Furthermore, one of the SCI channels can also be configured for LIN operation. In addition to the SCI, there is an I2C peripheral, which has four channels, one of which has a maximum bit rate of one megabit per second, and also an SPI peripheral block with three channels, all of which are capable of 25 megabit per second in master mode. What can you do with all of these serial communication channels? Well, UART is a point-to-point -point topology, so it's handy to have access to many of those, as you'll need one UART channel for each UART device in your system. With SPI, it's possible to place multiple devices on a shared bus, but each device needs a separate chip select pin. So instead, usually a separate SPI channel is used for each SPI device. One benefit of the I2C standard is that it's easy to create a network. Why might you need multiple I2C channels then? Well, each I2C device has a unique identifier, and this means that you can't use two of the same device on the same bus. So if you have three external DAC chips in your system, then you'd need a separate I2C bus for each one. There are other reasons, such as different voltage levels or throughput dilution, which would create a need for separate I2C buses in a system as well. The bottom line is that having many channels available and the flexibility to configure them as needed is a powerful capability when architecting the communication in your embedded system. If you would like to learn more about the communication peripherals available on the RX microcontroller, then visit Renaissance Interactive where you'll find technical courses which explain these in more detail.